You are playing satisfactory and just made your first oil setup in tier 4. Then you start to unlock following progression tiers and unexpected things happen. There are alternative recipes that allow for half a dozen different rubber and plastic setups. And this is even before you consider things like factory scale and logistics. But as a gamer, you always hoard up those potions for a final boss because, well, this is just an extra and probably the extra that you just forget about in the end. And at first, alternative recipes in Satisfactory looks like the same story. And well, quote unquote, problem for future me. But after playing Satisfactory for around 1000 hours, I realized that this was not really the case. And the most incredible example is fuel power. Fuel generators, when used with alternative recipes, can produce up to three times the power. Quite ridiculous. And rubber with plastic are not an exception. 600 oil with basic recipe is 400 rubber or plastic. But with the game progression, we can bump up this number to 1800 units from the same amount of oil. This is net gain of 350%. This is a screener selling a bath water. And once you get this, you start the crusade of efficiency and want to plop hundreds of refineries like it's Texas in 1920s. <laughs> what is here? Blueprints, you say? Hmm. Let's make a blank refinery blueprint so your hands can click that like button instead of 10 more clicks in Satisfactory. Now you feel like an actual professional. You feel like you can say super computers like kibitz. But this was a bad impression and there is whole another level. Level where you understand that plastic is made from oil and oil is made from dinosaurs. Thus plastic dinosaurs are made from real dinosaurs. Yeah. With this in mind, you can become an actual automation god of satisfactory. By extracting immense power of blueprint designer, you can make close recipe loop for production of plastic, rubber and fuel. And if that was not enough, you can make an integrated exterior for your factory. Ridiculous power comrade. And as the true comrade, I want to share this power with workers of Fixit Corporation. So this video would be a journey of sorts. I will briefly explain basic oil setups in the early game if you are the newer player. Then I will explain where the extra efficiency comes from. But mostly I would focus attention on free blueprint setups. Setups that are using the most efficient layouts for plastic, rubber and even fuel power. You know, like those one-click factories from YouTube thumbnails that are like, 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 like 30 clicks at least. And yes, I'm one of those people, uh, but I will show and share my blueprints for free. And if you enjoy that, well, write down in the comments what you had for breakfast today. Alright, you just unlocked oil. And the smartest thing here would be go off grid at first. Place oil extractor, connect three refineries, plop several biomass generators, and plop one fluid buffer in the end of the chain for the byproduct heavy oil residue. Load everything up. And now you have your first plastic and rubber for initial gameplay unlocks. And it is coupled with true toilet flush satisfaction. Only you are flushing oil into the environment like you are British Petroleum in 2010. Then you want to expand, but your coal power setup is like 5 Macronation miles away. Like bringing up so much cables cannot be great for the space-time continuum of the universe, so you decide to power everything on site by burning byproduct heavy oil residue in the fuel generators. You can convert 300 oil with 10 refiners into 200 rubber and the same amount of oil with yet another 10 refiners into similar amount of plastic. But here we can actually upgrade setup into self-sufficient transportation hub by plopping several packagers and constructors to make canisters and package fuel by sacrificing some plastic. Then you place some truck stations and you got yourself nice early game of grid refinery with built-in transportation. The good question is always something like, well, with speed of light in mind, can alien astronomers located 65 million light years away currently be busy by looking up dinosaurs on Earth? Like in real time. <laughs> yeah, alright. Let's be serious. We have an efficiency to tackle. We need to convert alien dinosaur juice into the most amount of plastic and rubber. And the key component here would be alternative recipes and water. And to make more plastic or rubber, we will need to make diluted fuel first. And to make diluted fuel, you will need packaged water and heavy oil residue. So, 
There is an alternative recipe for direct conversion of oil into heavy oil residue. Then there are canisters packing water in the packager, swapping that water for fuel in the refinery, then unpacking this fuel from canisters in the second packager and going for the next circle. And this is actually closed canister loop with no losses. A lot of players will avoid this setup and will wait all the way until blenders in tier 7. But honestly, the only difference is power consumption that is so minuscule that, well, I almost forgot about this. And canister setup is available way, way before in progression, and once you make it, you just can forget about it. And the next chapter of this video would make the blender setups actually obsolete, so it's kind of funny. You made fuel, and now you can just make a power setup with fuel generators and convert your byproduct resin in whatever you want, or just sync it, or you can be super smart and make another loop with alternative recipes for recycled rubber and plastic. And this is like self pitting serpent situation where you have more stuff on out than on the in. And only issue here is how you jumpstart the loop. This is really important. And well, actually manually inputting the rubber or plastic into one of the refineries is getting old pretty fast. But as you remember before we, we were making all this like heavy oil residue, we had some resin we can convert that into the residual rubber with yet another refinery. And then we connect this residual rubber to our loop and it just basically jumpstart the process. And the only difference between rubber or plastic would be ratios in the both refineries. So this is the way how you can convert actually 600 oil into 1800 units of either rubber or plastic. Obviously this is like very unwieldy and we need to break it down. I prefer to work from the standpoint of 150 oil in the pipe and then everything inside the system will fit into the mark for logistics. Then we can take this idea of fractal production to yet another level. We already broken up schematic down to something manageable with Mark for logistics. What if we take it to yet another level and work with the singular steps? Well, in the blueprint form. There are a total of 7 stages in production of rubber and plastic. 5 of those are done in the refineries and 2 are done in the packagers. And guess what? This looks like a job for dual blueprint design. Single blueprint can house up to 3 refiners and several smaller machines like packagers. We need the ratios and here is the schematic for rubber. And here is very similar schematics for plastic. I'm working around 45 items per minute and main limiting factor is refinery throughput without overclocking. Yes, this is way uh, that we will use more machines than well the normal setups, but if you are into FPS efficiency and stuff, you can always just double the production rate and use overclock setup. <laughs> Main quest here would be spreading our setups into two separate blueprints. And blueprint A naturally would host oil and water intake and initial processing for raw resources. While blueprint B will take on role of recycled loop and fuel unpacking. By the nature of blueprint space limitation, we can place three refiners with heavy oil residue, residual rubber and diluted fuel into oscillating fashion. Then we place water packager right behind fuel distillation plant. And as a connection between two blueprints, we will need bus for three items pinpointed between the blueprints. We need to send residual rubber and packaged fuel to the blueprint B, while we need to receive an empty canisters back into the blueprint A. In Blueprint B, we just jumpstart loop with the residual rubber having priority on the intake. Even if you are producing rubber and not plastic, we need to make sure that your residual rubber is going first into the system before any rubber output, otherwise the system can clog. Also with only two refiners in the layout, we have space for the fuel unpackager in parallel and not perpendicular as in Blueprint A. And obvious elephant in the room is combination of refineries and production ratios for rubber and plastic. Difference between rubber and plastic products production is the ratios that you have in the schematics and obviously the belt wiring is a bit reversed and you have output of different item and obviously because you are using the residual rubber from previous step of production uh, it would be a bit different but honestly it's very similar and all the machinery would be basically in the same space. So 
First of all, this is the dual blueprint with internal connections and also the horizontal manifold in mind. Overarching manifold for horizontal stacking is very straightforward. Just have 2 meter gap between neighborhood blueprints and align belts and pipes. Also with update 8 feature where you actually can snap the blueprints with R key, it will be snapping with this gap, so this is very convenient and very powerful for horizontal manifolds. Internal connection is where it becomes a bit tricky. First, we need three belts to align together. And to make the belt work easier, I just decided to make a tunnel through the blueprint B. As we come into the tunnel, we see three pull outlet wall on the both sides. You just connect the belts, power and pipes, and you are connected. Also, there is another very awesome feature that I'm very happy with. And I think every single blueprint factory should have this feature if you have the space. When you design stackable blueprint, often you end up with output on the one side. And this can be really inconvenient. A lot of satisfactory creators, they just end up making two different blueprints for left and right. But you can be as clever as Klingon scientist and just brute force omnidirectional output. Yep. You can have two outputs on the opposite sides, outputting finished product at the same time, completely automatically. At first, I was totally overthinking this system with like active smart splitters, but well honestly you just place splitter on the first belt and the merger on the second belt going into the opposite direction. Then both belts will just oversaturate until you connect output on the either side. And once this is done, your split will always just go into the output that suck, like suck plastic and rubber products. Yeah. That doesn't sound right. Considering layout, I just placed two belts above the tunnel. And well, beyond that, another very interesting feature of the blueprints is an ability to place canisters straight into the packagers before building a blueprint. So all the busy work for the canister loop setup is just downscale to the blueprint designer and some canisters in your inventory when you are building a blueprint. My rubber and plastic blueprints, they are designed to be stacked 10 times for the total output of 450 units of product per minute. Work quite well in the mid game with Mark IV logistics and still as relevant in the late game because, well, this is basically the most efficient setup that you'll ever need and, well, you just can scale it. Like over here, for example, in the Spire Coast, I just have two fully clocked pure nodes with 600 oil each and they are being converted in one building into 1800 rubber and another one the same amount of plastic. This is a lot and probably for majority of players this will be like the last rubber and plastic setup ever. There are a total of 80 individual blueprints per factory in four levels. Yeah, it sounds a lot, but honestly considering the numbers, this is like probably the last setup that you'll ever need. As exterior I'm using Art Deco motifs and I totally explore how to make those in my previous video on this channel, so check this one over here. And for the base I'm also using yet another blueprint design, which is, well, basically a very simple foundation base with sloped angles and one single fat column in the middle. It drives the inspiration from a bunch of brutalist apartments all over the world and especially from the Le Cabusier Berlin Unité in France, uh, which is a very simple design and, well, here we go. So we have one last thing to tackle. I have already explored blueprint fuel setups before my channel, but there is always a room for improvement. Uh, also you remember that first half of your super efficient rubber and plastic setup is basically pure fuel. Only thing that you need to do is just place the fuel generator into the blueprint. And yes, you can totally cram fuel generator, two refiners, two packers and five batteries into 4x4 blueprint. Sounds wild, but I was able to nail this, it's not so hard and there's almost no clipping there. And I explore this in the respective video on my channel. Here I just iterated on the setup, introducing such features as omnidirectional output for the byproduct resin, uh, remove the storage container for my setup of canister loop, I just preloaded the canister into the packager, because well I can do this, I didn't know about that before. Also I added extra batteries and just redesigned the exterior to match my rubber and plastic factories. Uh, in, in the end of the day like 300 oil in the pipe can fuel up to 9 gigawatts of power and this is effective power, this is not, not like dirty power, this is like what you get. And as with previous designs I just intend to stack it vertically. An exterior now is more suited to place it with similar in nature plastic and rubber factories. 
And of side connections I just covered it up with simple blueprint covers, just make some simple adjustments. And on the top I'm doing like decorative crowns. And this is actually a work in progress, obviously I'm just using one single blueprint over here, but I intend to iterate on those. You know, like a problem for future me as usual. But you know, I just spend too much time editing, writing scripts, blah blah blah, doing YouTube stuff. And if you never exported blueprints, you will need to do this manually. You need to go to your system disk, users, your username, app data, local, factory game, saved, save games, blueprints. There your game session would create a folder once you have blueprints unlocked in your progression and have created first blueprint. Every blueprint consists from two parts, .sbp file with parts and items and .sbp cfg file with text description and color settings. Quick note that my blueprints are done in update 8 experimental and they will crush on all the version of satisfactory. Links to blueprints are in the pinned comment down below. This was three ways to invade oil with automation in satisfactory. Thank you very much for watching, give this video all the automation invasion you can imagine. And until the next time, have a nice one and Yakis out.